Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Bold and Break, and we are back with another Redshift video. This Redshift video will be exploring materials, and we are going to be very focused on an introduction to how materials work in Redshift. So this will be very beginner friendly, this video. So just be aware of that. If you're an intermediate or advanced user of Redshift, this mightn't have a lot to offer. This is just breaking down the basics of Redshift materials. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is make sure our render is set to redshift i am using cinema 4d r25 uh, we have our material manager up here in the top right hand corner before we start making this material i want to address something that's in an earlier video yes there are two views you have the redshift legacy view which is based off the expresso ui in cinema 4d or you have the new and updated ui which is the maxon node view let's look at how it works and how you activate either so to activate the Maxon node view, go to create, go down to Redshift, tools, and you need to make sure this is ticked. Now, right now, we're gonna tick this off and see what happens. We're gonna go to create, Redshift material, and we're gonna open this material, and we have the old legacy view here. Now, let's say we wanna turn on the Maxon node view. We go back and do the same thing again, and it's still the legacy view. So before you create a new material, you need to make sure you have the view you want select. It doesn't automatically convert a material that's been created. So you'll see here, this is now the new updated view, but we still have the legacy view because when we created that material, we had the use node material presence ticked off. So just be aware of that and hopefully that addresses the issues people were experiencing in my previous quick tip of how to use the Maxon node view. Okay, cool. Let's delete these two materials and let's get started creating a redshift material. Uh, let's open this and dock this to our right plane. Redshift, go to our objects. Let's just create a simple summit sky rig. On this texture map. So we have our base materials here, um, and we're going to just start creating this material, this shader. So let's plug in our diffuse to our color channel. Let's apply this texture to our plane. This isn't the view we want. So we are going to start our GPR. And I don't like these safe frames, so I'm going to press Shift V, go to safe frames, and just turn them off with our sky in place. Okay, brilliant. So let's get started adding more detail to this material. We're gonna bring in our normal map. Everyone loves the normal map. And to use the normal map, you'll need to use a bump node. Bring in your bump node to this and plug in your normal map into the input. Then plug in your normal bump map into the overall channel and the bump map node in that channel. There is another bump map channel in advance, but that is for a different purpose. Do not use that. Now, nothing's really happening here, um, but that is because we need to change our input type to tangent space normal. And now we start to see a shift in what is happening. Um, we're getting that light information working correctly. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is we want to bring in um, a displacement map, which is here. Now, an important thing about displacement map to note is you need to make sure your displacement map has some soft fall off on the edges. If those edges are really sharp, you're going to have like mm, some artifacts in the geometry. You'll even get some artifacts in the geometry here, but you don't want that harsh displacement to happen because this is changing the geometry of your object. Let's bring in our displacement node. Plug this in to your texture, texture map, then you plug this displacement node into the output displacement nothing is happening why when you are displacing geometry or an object you need to make sure you have a redshift object tag on the object and then you go to geometry override enable and enable displacement you're still not getting much displacement here and that is because you need to start playing with some values to get this displacement working correctly first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up our maximum subdivisions to 12. So to make things move a bit faster, we're going to go to Redshift and we're going to freeze our tessellation. This makes sure Redshift isn't updating the subdivision every single time we move the scene around. Okay, so let's bring our maximum displacement up to 10 and bring our displacement scale up to 5 and see slowly just start displacing this. We start to see the geometry displaced, but we want a bit more than that. Maybe we bring our scale of our displacement up to two. And let's go back into our object tag. 
it's up to 30 to maybe 100 here don't go crazy with this placement because you'll start to deform things too quickly so i actually think there's too much deformation and we want to bring down our scale here a bit maybe back down to one okay this is looking pretty sweet start adding more layers to this shader maybe freeze your geometry now that will again speed up the process of just having a look around the scene if you want to change your subdivision or your displacement you need to make sure these are off to see these updates working this is looking good so far so let's now add a roughness map and plug that into reflection and the roughness channel it has looking much better you won't always have a roughness map maybe at hand so there's a quick way here that you can convert a glossy map and that is using a color invert node so if we plug that in here to the input i'm going to actually plug this into the surface see how it's working and it's not working incredibly well so what we can actually do is add a color correct node to just have some control over the contrast of the glossy map before okay let's move these try and keep your nodes somewhat organized we can bring down the contrast here start to see the levels bring back up the contrast here let's see how that is looking plug that back in our material Put this into our roughness channel and if you press this little button here in the left hand corner you can solo what's happening which is very very helpful you don't always have to plug it into the um surface output but sometimes it's helpful because it's going through a number of channels to get to this point so um just to be clean sometimes i'll just plug it into the output okay so that's a method of converting the glossy map so we're just going to delete that and bring back in our roughness map and i would recommend maybe using the color correct node here just to have some control over the look and it's also good practice to have this color correct node in place just as you can make changes on the fly so we can you know, add more contrast to this and it's looking a bit sharper the next area to explore is the ambient occlusion if we bring our ao texture and go into the diffuse channel and use the weight we can then start to see how the ambient occlusion is working and that look that looks okay but it might be worth putting a color correct node in there and playing with the values but there's also another way of using ambient occlusion and sometimes it's better it, it can be um, but not all the time so we're going to use this node called ao ambient occlusion I'll take this off for a sec and we are going to plug this in just to our surface for now and we'll have a look at what's doing and it's adding these soft shadows natively in redshift which is very helpful first thing we want to do is take reflective so we're going to get soft shadows over those reflective edges and if we change the spread here what that is doing that is clamping in where those soft shadows will fall and you can also change the fall off make it wider it's not doing much here so we can just soften those shadows a bit. Um, but, you know, keep maybe let's keep this at one uh, and keep that spread maybe at 0.5. Another powerful thing about this tool is that you could change the color of the soft shadows. A mistake many people make is just making a shadow black or making the brighter areas white. That's not always the case. Light is bouncing off the surface and the shadow created is usually a color closer to the surface the light is bouncing off of it's never fully black a good rule of thumb here is if we plug this back in and we sample the color from the darker area here and we get more of a blue color and we just bring this slightly over maybe we just sample our highlights look for a greater area and let's see what this looks like if we put this into our waist D those darker areas are showing up more so that is quite cool um, it's a great technique to use um, if you're not getting the results from your ambient occlusion texture map okay so imagine you want to scale this texture and you try and scale it and then you find you say, oh i have to go into each node and scale it accordingly that's very annoying so what we can do is we can we can cut the time to do that by using a node called the value node. Let's just drop that in there and let's plug this. And before we do, let's put the input to one and let's plug this into the scale of each texture here. We don't need to do it for ambient occlusion. Okay. So that is put this to zero. 
we get nothing because it doesn't have a it's scaling zero so if we put this to three you'll start to see the power of this now obviously that needs amending because that looks very uniform you can really start to see the power of this quite quickly and we can look at how to fix this repetition in later videos another thing i would suggest is to do it for your rotation plug that into our rotation okay cool uh, let's put this to 45 degrees put our scale up to five and you can see that is a really quick way instead of going into each individual node and changing it and this is why nodes are really really powerful as you build materials you're going to have a lot of nodes and it's going to get quite messy a very very helpful trick is to select both nodes right click and you can group your node this cleans up things visually if you had several value nodes into this group you don't have to see have them all scattered about and all you have to do to change the values is double click into the node and you can go right back here as there's a trail back into your texture okay so i hope this tutorial was helpful if you want a more advanced tutorial on redshift materials there is a link below in the description um to an earlier video i did um i will be doing more videos like this please remember to like comment and subscribe uh, it is much appreciated thank you for watching and goodbye